All right, guys, we are going to get into some factoring review. And so we are going to be factoring polynomials today. So we are going to be taking the simplified form and putting it into a factored form with parentheses. And so um, the first method that we're going to do on these first four problems are factoring using the box method. And so whenever I have a problem that I need to factor, I always put my first term right in here in my first box. And then I always put my last term here in my last box. And then to get these two middle boxes, we're going to have to come over here and make our x, all right? So in order to do that, we need to identify our a, which is the coefficient of b squared. So that's 1. Our b, which is our coefficient of our um, x term, or the b term. So that's 8. And our c, which is always going to be that constant, so that's 7. And so what we do is we say, okay, well, a times c is going to give us, um, that would give us a in 7. And then the b, -b, b is this value down here, which is the 8. And so what we are going to do is we're going to see, well, what two numbers multiply together to get us 7, but add up to get us 8. And in this case, guys, we know that that would actually be 1 and 7. 1 times 7 I didn't get that. gives us 7, and then 1 plus 7 gives us 8, all right? So then we can say, okay, so my 8B is splitting, being split up into 1B plus 7B, so that's, I'm going to go 7B plus 1B. It does not matter which box you put it in. Now, in order to pull these lovely guys out here, we find our greatest common factor. So B squared and 7B, those guys have a common factor of B. B squared and 1B have a common factor of B. And then I like to think to myself, okay, B times what gives me 7B? Well, that's B times 7. B times what gives me 1B? Well, that would be 1. So my two factors would be these two lovely guys here. That would be B plus 7 and B plus 1. So for this particular problem, in order to check your answers, what you can always do is you can take your calculator, you can go to your y equals, and I can type in the original problem. Instead of b squared, I'm going to do x squared plus 8x plus 7. Then I'm going to type in my factored form here, which would be x plus 7 times x plus 1. And then I'm going to check my table by hitting second graph. And when I do that, I see that my y values are exactly the same, so that was correct, okay? And so this is a really great way to check yourself because a lot of times you might mess up like a plus sign or a minus sign, so that's a great way for you to check yourself. So the simplified form was the original form that they gave us, b squared plus 8b plus 7. And our factored form that we got as our answer here is b plus 7 times b plus 1. All right, so now let's move on to the second one. Now this particular one, what we want to do is we want to look at it and we want to make sure that we are, t we want to check and see if there's any kind of um, common factor we can take out. It looks like 3, negative 2, negative 5. There's no common factors here. So what we can do is we want to go ahead and type in our, or we can put our first term in our first box and our last term right here. And then we're going to identify our first term, oh, I guess I should have done that as like a blue, I guess. Our first, the a value is going to be 3, because that's the coefficient to p squared. The b value is negative 2. And the c value is that constant, that negative 5. So when we're going across here, we say, okay, well, a times c is that negative 15. The b value is going to be negative 2. So we need to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 15, but add up to negative 2. Now, if you don't know these numbers off the top of your head, there is a way you can find the factors on the calculator. Don't forget, we can go in here and we can type in negative, oops, you can type in your top number there, that negative 15, and you can divide that by your x. And when we do that, we say, okay, then we check our table, second graph. 
If we do that, we want to find whole number pairs. So there's one. 1 and negative 15, that adds up to negative 14, so we don't want that one. Ooh, but 3 and negative 5, that adds up to our three. -er. 3 and negative 5, that adds up to what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and say that now we are dividing this up into 3p minus 5p. So that negative 2p is being split into two separate terms. So that becomes 3p and this becomes, oh, plus 3p and then minus 5p. Sorry about that, guys. So then when we take out our factors, we look here and we say, okay, well, what can we take out of here? We can definitely take a p. But 3p squared and 3p are also both divisible by 3. That is also the greatest common factor of our integers there. Now between 3p squared and 5p, we can just take out a p and check yourself 3p times p gives you that 3p squared. Now 3p times what gives me 3p? Well, I would say 3p times 1. p times what gives me negative 5p? Let's say negative 5. Because p times negative 5 gives me negative 5p. Negative 5 times positive 1 gives me that negative 5. So in that case, what we're doing is we now have our two factors, and that's 3p minus 5 times p plus 1. And you can put this guy into your calculator in the y equals. You can put your original problem into your calculator in y equals, and you will see that they will give you the same um, form right there. So our simplified form was that original form, that 3p squared minus 2p minus 5. And the factored form that we just found and solved was 3p minus 5 times p minus 1, which is wonderful. All right, so now we're going to jump down here. All right, so 6x squared plus 7x minus 49. So when we do this one, we see that our um, that first term is that 6x squared. My last term is that negative 49. And then, so that means that my A is 6, my B is 7, and my C is that negative 49. So we want to find the two numbers that multiply together. Well, what's 6 times negative 49, guys? I don't know that off the top of my head. So I'm going to type that in my calculator here, 6 times negative 49. And that gives me negative 294. Yikes, that's a big number. And then over 7. Lovely. Okay, so what I would do is now we can go in here and we go y equals. We can say negative 294 divided by x. And when we do that, we can go second graph. We're going to find the two the two factors that are going to add up to a positive 7. So 1 is going to be negative. Uh, so I'm going to keep scrolling down because that's like negative, gosh, 35, which is not what we want. So I'm going to see if we can find some whole number pairs. Ooh, 14 and negative 21. So that's going to add up to negative 7. But 21 and negative 14, I think we have our winners. So that would be a 21 and a negative 14. All right. So I'm going to say that is a 21x minus 14x. So I'm going to put that in here as plus 21x minus 14x. All right. So if we want to find our factors for this, what we will do is we will say, OK, well, we can take out our x. 6 and 21 are also both divisible by 3. Um, that is the greatest common factor there. Between 6x squared and 14x squared, they are both divisible by x. They are also both divisible by 2. And 3x squared times 2x squared gives us that 6x squared. Then 3x times 7 gives me negative 21x. And 2x times negative 7 gives me negative 14x. And negative 7 times positive 7 gives me that negative 49. So it should check out. So that becomes 2x plus 7 
times 3x minus 7. And then don't forget to go ahead and check your answers here. Let's see, so that's 6x squared plus 7x minus 49. And then we have 2x plus 7 and 3x minus 7. Check my table, and sure enough, that's what we see. They are all the exact same values. I'm going to scroll back up so it's kind of like up here. Because they're all, all those y values are the exact same for all of my x values. So they are equivalent to one another. So if we were going to rewrite this, we would say, okay, 6x squared plus 7x <coughs> minus 49, excuse me, is the exact same thing as 2x plus 7 times 3x minus 7. So our factored form would be right there. Now we're going to do one more on this page. And so we see that 9k squared, oops, sorry about that, plus 66k equals 21. Now here's the special thing about this guy is, y'all, for this particular one, there is, we can actually take out a greatest common factor right here. So if we, if we look at this, we can actually take out a 3 out of this guy. So check this out. These, this 9, 66, and 21 are all divisible by the same number. So this would give us 3k squared plus 66 divided by 3 is 22k plus 7. So really, we are factoring this guy right here, okay? And 3, 22, and 7 do not share anything in common. So we should be good to go. So now we can go ahead and we can factor this one. So we can look here and we say, okay, my a value is that 3. And so we're going to say 3k squared. And then my b value is that 22. And then my c value is that 7. And so that is what is going to go right there in our last box. Okay, and so whatever we get out of our factored form, it will all be multiplied by this 3 on the outside, okay? So now we're going to go here and we're say, okay, 3k squared plus 7, plus 7, but we want to split up our 22k. So we look here and we say, okay, well, 3 times 7 is 21. My b, -b, -b goes on the bottom at 22. <clears throat> so the two numbers that multiply to 21 but add up to 22 would be 21 and 1. So 21 times 1 gives me 21, but 21 plus 1 gives me 22. So that would be plus 21k and plus 1k. All right, so now we can go ahead and factor out our common factors here. So 3k squared and 21k, they both have a k in common. They also are both divisible by a 3. 3k squared and k, they both have a k in common. Now, 3k times what will give me 21k? Well, that's going to be a 7. 3 times 7 gives me that 21. k times what gives me 1k? Well, that's just going to be a 1. So that becomes 3k. Yeah, 3, k times 1 gives you 1k. And 1 times 7 still gives me that 7, so it checks out here. So now what we do is these are our two factors. So we have 3k plus 1 times k plus 7. But we can't forget about our 3 here in the front. So it's really multiplied the whole thing by 3. And so if we wanted to check ourselves the the complete simplified form was that original form, that 9k squared plus 66k plus 21. And then the factored form is 3 times 3k plus 1 times k plus 7. All right, y'all. And if we put those both in the calculator, we will see 9x squared plus 66x plus 21. And then down here, we're going to have 3 times 3x plus 1, and then x plus 7. 
and when we check our tables, we see that they are exactly the same for all my y values. So that is a quick refresher on how to factor using the box method.